everybody. Welcome back to the movie trivia showdown. It's time for a team's match in tournament season. That's right, baby. It's tournament season with all roads leading to the spectacular. Hello, everybody. I am Andrew Guy. Joining me today is Brad Gilmore. And Brad, we have some heavy hitters coming out today. And of course, a hot new rookie. Hey, absolutely, absolutely. Paige for Brady is going to be coming into her team's match. Paige has been playing sensational all year long. Been one of my favorite players so far this season. And then this is really, for me, an interesting match in, in so many different ways. But really for you, I mean, you're Mr. Team's guy when you were an active <laughs> player, right? You, you, you were the yeah. tournament killer. And um, you, there's a couple people here that you're a little familiar with in, in the team's division. Yeah, I might know a thing or two about three of the players out there, two former teammates of mine, and of course, Dan Merle and I, I believe, played a match back in the day. I'm not sure. Maybe you guys I have heard something that. Maybe about you it. haven't. Yeah. <laughs> so this is an exciting first for me. And speaking of first, Dan Merle was kind enough to let us know before the match that he's played a lot of people for the first time this year, Snyder, Lon Harris, and now Drew McQueeny. So three wow. former belt holders going to battle today along with a hot rookie who just destroyed Ben Bateman. He might get mad at me if I say that. Who are you thinking about, or what are you thinking about today's match, man? Well, I think that one, I've always said that Dan Merle, we know that he's the GOAT. That's what everyone universally refers to him as. I think that he's the greatest player of all time. I've always said, though, that Ben Bateman, I believe, is the best player of all time in regards of strategy, thinking through his opponents', his opponent's weaknesses, thinking through his strengths, how to put that wheel together. So when they came together as Danger Zone, I said, you have the best of both worlds right here. You have the greatest and you have the best. How can you lose? We've seen them have, you know, hills and valleys, might I say, uh, yeah. to use a Back to the Future reference throughout their season. But I think that with every battle we see them in, they are always stronger as a team. And I think that that goes a really long way when you talk about tournament season. On the opposite end of the spectrum, Sam Levine knows a thing or two about uh, being a champion in the team's division. The guy who is playing under his expert management today uh, went and won those team belts with him. And Paige Fabretti has really been the Boston badass and living up to her name. <laughs> so I really love how they match up. And I think that this is going to be one of those very dynamic type of games. Yeah, a debut here for, of course, the Untouchables. And on the other side of that, coming off of two losses is Danger Zone. It could be make or break season for the dungeon, but that's enough out of us. Let's hear what these four competitors plus their managers have to say. The Untouchables versus Danger Zone. Let's see, one of these is a brand new, very exciting team. The other is a, a super team that's really uh, anything but. But it's really us against the questions, and it's a huge honor to be on a team with Drew Bikini, a former team's champion. And you know what's gonna taste that much more sweeter? Is when I am the person to single-handedly end Ben Bateman's season. Tournament thus far, down goes Bateman, down goes Bateman. Let me let me see how the usual suspects have fared so far this season against uh, Dan and, and Ben Bateman. Yeah, only wins. That's all we've got, is only wins against these two. So uh, I'm pretty excited about that. Shmoda, I've showed you guys that I can play in the singles league. Now I'm here to show you guys that I can play in teams with none other than one of the greatest teams players in Drew, the godfather of McQueenie. The godfather of what? Legoland? Some brat who gets a crappy Christmas present every year? She showed Ben Bateman a thing or two. Ooh, I want to see more of that. Uh, I'm going to ask everyone to stop using the word upset yeah. because this match played out exactly as it was meant to play out. Bateman's upset that he lost. That's what it was. <laughs> That's the <laughs> um, It's an honor to be in a league with all of those fine gentlemen who have done work in the showdown but this isn't the 2015 Schmodown anymore. Dan and Ben, I know you guys are called Danger Zone, but the only danger that's gonna be running through this tournament is Drew and I as the Untouchables. Dan Merle's playing angry because Sam Levine owes him money, and we plan on collecting today. Yeah, I'm uh, getting pretty tired of figuring out exactly how many wins the suspects have over the dungeon this year, but hey, I'm ready to add another, you know? Since I'm such a nice guy, I'm gonna save Christian Harloff 75 cents in postage, and I'm gonna mail the Untouchables their pink slip from this tournament.
Okay, all right. No surprise there. You see Ben Bateman and Paige Perbetti going after each other. You hear Sam Levine and John Kaiser trading words. I think it's exactly what you'd expect. One of the things that you said a moment ago is about the management of Sam Levine and how that's going to impact the Untouchables today. You have a very, very seasoned uh, team on the side of the dungeon. Can they reign that, lord that over this brand new team making their debut? I guess we're about to find out. Are you ready, partner? I think, is it, is it time? I think, I think it's time. Look. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the movie trivia schmodown. Introducing first. Representing the usual suspects making their team's debut. The Godfather, Drew McQueenie, the Boston badass Paige Fabretti, this is the Untouchable! Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Welcome, welcome to the ring. And their opponents, representing the dungeon. They are the number four ranked team in the team's division. With a record of three wins and two defeats, Dangerous Dan Murrow, then the Boss Bateman, this is Danger Zone. <laughs> Sorry, one second. I'm reading this, but this is a great book. Have you guys read this? This is so good. <laughs> Dan wow. Murrow tried to score Greg, some extra points. You wrote Greg Gilmore. I w oh, I'm sorry. I would never try to curry favor. I apologize. Hey, gang, Mark from the Schmodown here. And, you know, when it comes to meat, quality matters. And when you invest in high-quality meat from ButcherBox, that goes way beyond just having a great-tasting meal. ButcherBox sources their meat from partners with the highest standards for quality. There's no more searching the grocery store for 100% grass-fed beef or organic free-range chicken, wild-caught seafood, and more. And here's my favorite part, is that ButcherBox's sourcing decisions are made holistically. So they keep the farmer, the planet, the animal, and your family in mind, always delivering products you can trust. I'll tell you a story. I've, I've been a fan of ButcherBox for a minute now. I got my fresh box last week and it had a bunch of the organic free range chicken. So I decided to get cocky. I went out to the new grill we just got in my apartment complex and I started grilling up some buffalo chicken. I like some spice with my chicken. And I had neighbors coming out of their apartment and saying, that smells amazing. Yeah, I'm the coolest guy in my apartment complex for a couple days anyway. Thanks to ButcherBox. And every month, ButcherBox is gonna ship you a curated selection of high quality meat right to your home. There's no antibiotics added. There's no hormones added. It's packed fresh. It's shipped frozen for your convenience. And you can customize your own box or just go with one of their expert recommendations. ButcherBox is going to take care of you. And right now, ButcherBox is offering new members a 10 to 16 pound turkey free in their first box. Just go to butcherbox.com slash trivia to sign up. That's butcherbox.com slash trivia to receive a free turkey in your first box. You have a calendar. You know what's coming up. It's Thanksgiving, and they're sending you a free turkey. What more do you want? That's a clutch bird right now, and ButcherBox is my go-to for delicious, sustainably, and responsibly sourced meat. Go to butcherbox.com slash trivia right now. And here we go. We have our competitors meeting for the first time. Danger Zone and the Untouchables. Hello to you four. Hello. Hello. I mean, hey, this isn't the first time I've beat Ben Bateman, so it won't be the last either, so... You know, I was I was wondering how long it was going to be until Paige for Betty decided to bring that one up, and she, she didn't wait long. I took the under. I think I won on that one. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, guys. It was going to happen right away because it needed to. Well, uh, it seems that everyone is for winning Paige. And uh, it seems that Ben Bateman and Paige for Betty are doing exactly what we'd expect. Let's check out the rules of round number one. Each competitor will get eight questions from the entire movie trivia universe. You guys have 15 seconds to write each answer down. Each answer must be said aloud while showing us what you've written down on the board. So penmanship does count here. All questions are worth one point. And of course, if you get eight of those points, you get an extra bonus question worth one point as well to give you nine points total in round number one. Teams may, of course, ask for a repeat or a JTE rule. You've got three of those for the entirety of the match. You can also challenge knowing John Kaiser and Sam Levine. That's something that you definitely need to know about. If that challenge is overruled, then you lose your challenge. You cannot do one for the rest of the game. But if it is upheld, you get to hold on to that challenge in case you want to submit another one. And of course, there are no steals or working with your teammate in round number one. So let's start with you, Boston Badass. Are you ready? Let's do it. Dan Merle, the GOAT, are you ready? Dungeon's open for business. 
Godfather, how you feeling? I'm good. Let's go. And the boss. Let's get it done. Then let's get ready to schmoda. All right. Question number one coming from the category of Oscars to start off this team's tournament match. Remember, winner of this does go on to play press room. Here we go. Question number one, Oscars. Which famous composer received Oscar nominations for his scores to The Poseidon Adventure, Home Alone, and The Patriot? You know, Brad, yesterday I watched the movies that made us on Home Alone. I actually know the answer to the question now. And crazy thing is, didn't they film it in a high school or something like that? The whole movie? <laughs> they did. Five, four, three. I actually really like that series. It's been a lot of fun, too. And one. All right, let's start with you. What was that? Is that too late on repeat the question there? Uh, there? Uh, that's all right. That's, uh, we'll, we'll give it to you just because I was talking and I was counting down. Unless there's any complaints here, we'll go for your first repeat here for Danger Zone in the category of Oscars. Which famous composer received Oscar nominations for his scores to The Poseidon Adventure, Home Alone, and The Patriot? Yeah, it's crazy that they filmed that whole thing in a high school. It like, doesn't even make sense to me when I look at it. It just seems that being on a set with Joe Pesci would be one of life's great treasures. Yeah, five, four, three, two, love, one. Okay, and no more repeats. Everyone's got their answers down. Let's start with you, Boston Badass. I wrote down uh, Hans Zimmer. That is incorrect. Ben, the boss, Bateman, what do you have? I wrote John Williams. Danger Zone on the board first. Drew McQueenie's tied up. Uh, that would be John Williams. That is correct. And to give them a one point lead, Dan Merle, do you have it? Another goat, John Williams. <laughs> Good start. How you your teammate there, Drew? You happy with that? All right. I'm, I'm ready to go. All right, gentlemen, and Ms. Boston Badass, your second question is in the category of new releases. Which Oscar winner plays Jim Baxter, an L.A. police detective who teams up with Denzel Washington to catch a serial killer in the 2021 film The Little Things? So if we're going to do some product placement here, Brad, I'm going to do a little bit of myself. I've been doing this podcast with one of the competitors here on screen called The Best and the Worst. We just did an episode on Denzel, and I got to tell you, the little things did not fare well. Three. He means two, by that it's a piece of garbage. One time. And pens down. Hands up, please. Ben the Boss Bateman, what do you got? Rami Malik. That is correct. Drew McQueenie. I do not have it. Godfather misses Dan Merle. I disagree with my partner on the movie, but I agree on Rami Malik. Two points there for Danger Zone. And Boston Badass, do you have it? Uh, Rami Malek. Okay, so perfect so far from Danger Zone. Untouchable struggling just a bit. Four to two here as we get to question number three. Category is comic book movies. In which Avenger film does the main villain say, you want to protect the world, but you don't want to change it, or you don't want it to change? There's only one path to peace, your extinction. If you guys need me to read that again, I'm more than happy to. I would love a technical repeat if that's okay. Yeah, that's my, my mistake there. Question number three, comic book movies. In which Avengers film does the main villain say, you want to protect the world, but you don't want it to change? There's only one path to peace, your extinction. That's a very villainous quote. You know, he, he, he lived up to the villain title with that one, or they lived up to the villain title. Yeah, I would have to agree. That doesn't seem like something a nice person would say. Five, four... Three, two, one. Pens down, hands up. The Godfather, let's start with you. Uh, that would be Avengers Age of Ultron. That is correct. Dan Merle, do you have it? Peace in our time, Avengers Age of Ultron. Love that movie. Boston Badass. The Avengers Age of Ultron. And for a perfect four, the boss, do you have it? Terrific James Spader performance, Avengers Age of Ultron. It was hard not to do an impression. All right, and we get to your next question. Uh, question number four in the categories of remakes and reboots. Apologize in advance if there's any mispronunciations. I will spell it if you need it. Marcus Nispel directed Jared Padalecki and Danielle Panabaker in this 2009 remake of a famous slasher film. I, I went through and read all the questions beforehand, and I made sure that you got that one, Brad. <laughs> I appreciate that. I appreciate that. <laughs> you know, I felt that way. So why didn't I get on? 
or even. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up. Let's start with Dan Merle. Friday the 13th. That is correct. Page for Betty, do you have it? It is Friday the 13th. The boss. I went with the wrong one. He does not have it. Okay. And the Godfather. Ben and I made the same mistake and went with the other Nispel remake. Wow. So Dan Merle, the only one perfect so far through round number one, seven to five, seven to five. As we move on to question number five from the category of dramas. A little bit of drama going on here. Sorry, I had to steal that. That's that's how it's, I, I'm, I'm sorry to everybody. Uh, here we go. Question number five, dramas. Which actress appears in these three films? The Social Network, The Peanut Butter Falcon, and The High Note. All right. Which one of these are you going with first? You got to stream one of them right now. We're going with... Oh, maybe Peanut Butter Falcon because I recently watched Social Network. Five, four... Three, two, one, and no repeat there. So time is up. We're going back to the Boston Badass page for Betty. Do you have it? Oh, I just love the Peanut Butter Falcon, but it's Dakota Johnson, guys. That is correct. Ben the Boss Bateman. Dakota Johnson. Drew McQueenie, do you have it? I do not. And Merle. Dakota Johnson. Wow, Johnson. All right. So right now we have a nine to six lead for Danger Zone, Brad. And Dan Merle, of course, still perfect. No surprise there. As we get to your uh, sixth question in the category of comedies. In, <laughs> oh, thank you. In what 2003 comedy will you find the characters of Mitch, the Godfather Martin, Bernard Beanie Campbell, and Frank the Tank Richard? All right, I'm gonna send this right back your way. Which one of those nicknames would you rather have, Brad? <laughs> Um, Beanie sounds cool. I think the tank and really? someone already has Godfather, so might as well. Let's go with Beanie. Beanie Brad Four, Gilmore. I like it. Three. That was my last pick. Two, <laughs> one, and time is up. Ben the Boss Bateman, what do you got? Frank the Tank. Frank the Tank. Old school is correct. Godfather. That'll be old school. That's where he got his nickname. Dan Merle. Old school. And the Boston Badass. I am the new school in this crew, but it is old school. Perfect round 11 to eight. As we move on to your pen ultimate question here in round number one, coming from the category of eighties. How many films were released in the Beverly Hills cop franchise during the 1980s? I gotta admit, Brad, I watched this for the first time as an adult recently, and I, I loved it. I, I love both oh. of them. I think, I think they're the just totally different first. genres. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually would agree with that too. One and time. The Godfather, the 80s master himself. Do you have it? Dos. Two. Two. That is correct. It's dangerous. Dan Merle. Give me two. Two. And page for Betty. It is dos. Two, guys. And to round it out, Ben the Boss Bateman. Rest in peace to the greatest, Tony Scott. Tony Scott. All right, Brad, 13 to 10 here at the end of round one with Dan Merle still perfect. Let's check out that final question. All right, if Dan Merle gets this, it will trigger a perfect round for him. Category eight is an action adventure. Which actor appears in these three action films? Deja Vu, Escape Plan, and 2002's The Count of Monte Christ Cristo. Excuse me. I love 2002's Count of Monte Cristo. I don't think I've seen it. I think that's a blind spot for me. Yeah, you, the Deja okay Vu. Can repeat? Uh, but uh, you guys cannot confer. If you want to repeat, you oh, need to sorry. Repeat. Can I get a repeat, please? Sorry, Drew. Absolutely. All right. Here we go. That is you, uh, the usual suspect's first one. Excuse me, the Untouchables. Your category action adventure. Which actor appears in these three action films? Deja Vu, Escape Plan, and 2002's The Count of Monte Cristo. It's just a good revenge story, but it's still like PG-13 enough. I remember watching it with my mom. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll give it a whirl. <laughs> see what you did there. And in five, Shout four, out. three, two, 
one. Looks like the Boston Badass has it. Let's go over to Dangerous Dan Merle for a perfect round. I said Jim Caviezel. Caviezel? I believe that is correct. For a perfect round number one, Boston Badass, do you have it? I did not have it, no. Ben the Boss Bateman. Tough. Any day Deja Vu gets mentioned is a great day in my book. Jim Caviezel. And the Godfather, do you have it? Jim Caviezel. All right, so a very, very strong round number one from both teams here, Brad, but Dan Merle is the only one to play perfect 15 to 11. Dan, I'm going to ask you your bonus question. Of course, you can write it down if you'd like. You know how this goes. I think you've done it before. Your question, which animated film franchise features the voice talents of David Tennant, Craig Ferguson, and Kate Blanchett? I believe that would be the How to Train Your Dragon franchise. That is a perfect round, plus wow. the bonus for Dan wow. Merle, 16 to 11 Let's as work, we partner. close out round number one. The rules of round number two, each team is gonna take a spin at that there wheel and hope that Lady Luck lands on their side. You can spin again if you don't like what you got. We call that a mulligan or golf for do-over, unless you land on opponent's choice. If you wanna re-spin on spinner's choice, that is your own decision. Teams will then get six questions from the chosen category. Each question is worth two points unless you decide to check down to multiple choice, which will then drop the value down to one point. You have 15 seconds to answer each question, but opponents may steal in round number two if you guys give an incorrect answer. Of course, your team can confer on all of these questions. Both the teams have challenges available and two repeats are available on both sides of the board. All right, Danger Zone, you have a five-point lead right now. Would you like to spin first or defer to your opponents? You know, Dan, the only situation I ever really like to spin first on is sometimes a six points in the lead. We don't have it. We got the five. I think we should do it what we usually do, what we like to do. Yeah, I think it fits our game plan either way, so I would agree. Let's defer. Okay, let's do it. Let's see what this first-time team gets with their first wheel spin in their history. Emily Blunt. love Emily Blunt. How She's a know? nice lady. Let's I be mean, blunt. How do we feel about Emily blunt. blunt? Sure. Let's do Emily feel, Blunt. Yeah, I feel good. Do you want to spin again to see if we get... Nope. I don't like, think there's anything really to run from. All right, perfect. Let's do it. Emily Blunt it is. She's beautiful. All right, Untouchables. Right now you are down by five, which means you can walk away with a pretty nice lead here after your spin of Emily Blunt in round number two. Six questions coming your way, starting with this one right here in the category of Emily Blunt. Who plays Jack, the lamplighter, in Mary Poppins Returns? All right, so it's the Broadway guy, Lin yeah, Manuel nice. Miranda. So if you want to Lin -Manuel say Manuel Miranda, yes, that is, is our answer. Final? That's okay. that, our final right, answer is Lin Manuel points. Miranda. Final answer. <laughs> that is correct for two points and a nice start here to Emily Blunt in round number two. Your second question: Who plays Matt Graver? leader of a special CIA task force that Emily Blunt's character joins in Sicario. I feel like it's Thanos, right? Josh Brolin? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is uh, Josh Brolin himself. Final that is our correct. final answer. <laughs> more points? Yeah, if you guys could just say final Sorry. answer. We'll save Sorry, we will say final and... answer when we move. We got you guys. Okay, perfect. But you are still perfect through round number two, 15 to 16 right now, only down by one to take the lead your third question in the category of Emily Blunt. What is the profession of Emily Blunt's character in the Adjustment Bureau? She's a ballerina dancer. Yes, she is. She is a ballet dancer. Final answer, uh, final answer is ballerina. <laughs> there we go. Make you guys work for that. That is correct. Yes. Two more points here for the Untouchables. Great job sticking with Emily Blunt thus far, Brad. Absolutely, absolutely. They're perfect halfway through. Here we go. Question number four, category of Emily Blunt. What late night talk show host plays Emily Blunt's husband in the musical Into the Woods? It's James oh. Corden. Yeah. Our final answer is James Corden. There you go. You got it. Two more points to the untouchables. Perfect here in round number two. So we get to your next question. Blunt voices Juliet in what animated retelling of the Romeo and Juliet story? Nomeo and Juliet. Yes. Okay. Our, correct, our final answer is Nomeo and Juliet. 
Which is the correct answer, so we're good. For two more points, it is Nomeo <laughs> and Juliet picking up 10 points so wow. far in round number two, 21 to 16. Your final question, and to stay perfect, in the category of Emily Blunt, which MCU director directed Blunt in the 2020, 2010 film, The Wolfman? The great that Joe would, Johnston. That would be the one, the only, our final answer is Joe Johnston. Wow. That was an impressive as hell round number two Way from to go, the Untouchables. Absolutely go, perfect from top to bottom. 23 to 16. All right, everything's still up for grabs except for Emily Blunt, of course. You gotta look out for that opponents yeah, and spinners on the wheel. Bring your bring your kids to work day in the Schmodown. That's why nineteen nineties, nineteen nineties, gentlemen. Broad category. category. Yeah, I mean it's not my favorite. I don't I don't love keeping the broad categories, and I feel it's a very strong category from a queenie. Um, sure, we love a lot on this wheel. Worst case, we end up with nineties, which we're both totally fine with. But there's a lot there's a lot of great stuff on there. I mean, do you feel like you'll be able to get 10 or more points in 90s, Dan? I mean, I feel like I could get 10 or more points in just about anything, but let's go to something we're both a little more confident in. Let's spin again. Let's respin it. Let's, let's go right, with the go. Guy. Let's go with the go. Going for that respin. Dan Merle, speaking facts, by the way, of course. <laughs> I was just going to say, you got to love Dan's point of view. And, and look it at was that. It, pays it was off. worth it. All right. So, why is respin? What do you think, what do you, man? What do you like today, boys? I know there's a few things we like. Um, I mean, they took our yeah. favorite category, so. They did. Feeling pretty good about Cube. Yeah. Today feels like a good day. What do you think, Ben? Should we take it? Feels cube? like a good day. Let's they go feels with like it. a good day. <laughs> All right, gentlemen. Danger Zone, you selected Ice Cube for your second round category. And your first question Who stars alongside Ice Cube as Smokey in 1995's Friday? I believe this is Chris Tucker, Dan. It is uh, definitely Chris Tucker, 100%. Chris Tucker, final answer. Give him the two points. Chris Tucker is correct. Is correct as we get to your next question in the category of Ice Cube. Who directed 2002's Barbershop? I believe the first Barbershop is directed by, is it Tim Story? Yeah, it is uh, it is Tim Story, yes. yes. For sure? Yeah, Tim right. Story. Tim Story, final answer. Two more points for Danger Zone. Tim Story is correct. Tim Story is correct as we get to your third question in the realm of Ice Cube. Ice Cube made his directorial debut with what 1998 dark comedy that he also starred in? I believe this is the Players Club, Dan. It is the Players Club, 100%. The Players Club, final answer. Players Club is correct, is correct for two more points as they are all over Ice Cube as we get to your fourth question. And to retake the lead here. And to retake the lead. Who co-stars alongside Ice Cube as Ben Barber in 2014's Ride Along? That would be, be Kevin, Kevin Hart. Hart, correct? Yeah, that's yeah. correct. Yeah, Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart, final answer. final answer, yeah. Kevin Hart is correct. Two more points, two more points. As we have just two questions remaining, Danger Zone is 24 to 23. Two questions remain in round number two for Ice Cube. Your next question is thus. Who directed Ice Cube in 2001's Ghosts of Mars? This is John Carpenter, Dan. John Carpenter himself, Mr. Halloween. John Carpenter, final answer. That is correct for two more big points. Danger Zone going perfect thus far, Andrew Guy. Yeah, just an incredible round two here from both these squads. It's exactly what you'd expect. Can Danger Zone stay on track? All right, gentlemen, your final question in the category of Ice Cube. Who directed the film Triple X State of the Union? Is Triple X State of the Union Marcus Rumboy? I thought it was Lee Tamahori. You might but be right. If we want to be careful, we can check down. If you feel strongly Five, about it, I say trust four, your gut. Three, two. Lee Tamahori, one. final answer. That is correct for two wow. more big points. Hey guys, Christian Harloff here. And look, it is not always easy when you're searching for an audiobook, uh, you're searching for a podcast, and 
sometimes when you're looking for a book, it takes longer scrolling things, scrolling around, looking for things, and it does actually reading. Instead of standing in front of your bookshelf waiting for a title to jump out, sign up for Scribd. Scribd is awesome. Scribd, when I first found out about it, I started browsing around, and I, as I do, I put in Star Wars, and Ken Napsok's book came up. You pipe in what you're looking for, and there's so many great options. With Scribd, it's the world's most fascinating library, and it's just $9.99 a month. Explore all your interests in any format with millions of ebooks, audiobooks, magazines, and more for less than a cost of a single book. You can easily switch between titles and genres and the formats right from the app. And you can discover must-read new works from celebrated authors like Roxanne Gay, Charles Yu, and more. And it's premiering exclusively on Scribd. And right now, Scribd is offering our listeners an exclusive 60-day trial. Head on over to try.scribd.com slash trivia for your free 60-day trial. One more time. That is try.scribd.com slash trivia and get that 60-day trial. The second you sign up, you get instant access to the entire library. And you guys know how much I love Wired. Well, guess what Wired said about them? Wired said that it is the Netflix for books. I mean, right there. That tells you everything that you need to know about it. It's incredible. It's awesome. You'll love it. Sign up today. Okay, a dominant round number two from both sides of the board. Untouchables and Danger Zone go completely perfect. You saw that last question there. Lean it on your partner just a little bit. That's the best thing about teams. Let's get into round number three. Well, I think we got to see some rules here. The rules of round number three. Each squad is going to pick three numbers ranging from one to 20. You then will get three questions. First one worth two points, second worth three points, and the last one worth five big points. You guys can only co collaborate on the five point question. You still have 15 seconds to answer each question. There are no steals or multiple choice in round number three. And remember, challenges and JTEs are still available. We're at a score now of 28 to 23 danger zone back in the lead by five which means you gentlemen get to pick your first number or your numbers first all right i'll pick one partner and why don't you pick two how about that please uh i will pick number uh six uh i'm gonna go seven and three six seven and three untouchables what do you got uh, you want to go 18 13. And 16. They let's do that, it. Right? All right, let's go. All right, Danger Zone and the Untouchables, welcome back and welcome to round number three. Danger Zone, you do have a nice five point lead, as you might have heard Sam Levine say. So that was going to go to the Untouchables first. Just to remind everyone at home, we are sitting at 28 to 23. And the Untouchables, for your two point question, you selected number 18. That number is going to coincide with the category of thrillers. Thrillers for two points. Who would like to field that question? I'll take it. Okay, Boston Badass. For two points in the category of thrillers, Anthony Perkins plays which character in the 1960 film Psycho? That crazy man, Norman Bates. That crazy man, oh. Norman Bates, is correct for two points, narrowing the gap by just a bit, 28 to 25. And we are going to stay with the untouchables for your three point question. You selected number 13, which means that Drew McQueenie, you and myself are going to go to a category called classics. Classic okay. For three points and to tie the game. Who played young Susan Walker in the 1947 Christmas classic Miracle on 34th Street? Uh, that would be Natalie Wood. For three points, we have a tie wow. ball game. Brad Gilmore, 28 to 28. And we're going to send it over to Danger Zone. All right, Danger Zone. For your two-point question, you selected the number six. The number six corresponds to the realm of Mr. Will Smith. Will Smith and wow. your question. I think we have to decide who takes it first. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, yes. Decide who takes it first. Dan, I usually subscribe to the same theory match after match. If it's a good category in the two, I'm happy to take it. Take it away, brother. Yeah, I'll take I'll take Will Smith. All right, Ben, the boss, Bateman, will be answering the two-point question in the realm of Will Smith. Your question, sir. Agent J 
must travel back to 1969 to stop someone from murdering Agent K in what Men in, Men in Black film? Two. Men in Black One. 3. Men in Black 3 is correct to regain the lead. Yeah. It is 30 to 28. Danger zone. 30 to 28. We go back over to the Untouchables to answer their five point question and turn the heat on for Danger Zone. Remember, Godfather and Boston Badass, you can confer on this question. You mm -hmm. chose number 16. And number 16 from you means disaster movies to us for five points to regain the lead richard armitage stars as a tornado chaser in what 2010s disaster film all right 2010s disaster films uh armitage is he in hurricane heist no five four repeat the question um, this is your second repeat oh my gosh. in the category um, of not disaster Geostorm. films. Not... That's what I was saying was Geostorm, so it's not Geostorm. Richard Armitage stars as a tornado chaser in what 2010s disaster film? Christ. Um, um, what's the other? I, I, Greenland? No. Yeah, it's not Greenland. I, it may be Geostorm Five. then. I, I think that's our best guess because I don't. Well, we have one more repeat, so let's okay. do it. Repeat, repeat the question. All right. Your final repeat in the category right. of disaster films for five points. Richard Armitage stars as a tornado chaser in what? It's not necessarily. He's not necessarily the top disaster line film. person in the film. He's just a tornado chaser. So. Yeah. Is he in view to him? I can't remember if he's in I don't. I don't know. Richard Armitage is an invisible man, so he may well be. Um, but I don't think he's the lead in whatever Five, movie we're describing. Four, yeah, he's not. Three, you want to go with Geostorm, final two, answer? Two, Geostorm. One. Final answer, Geostorm. And your winner! Woo! Danger Zone! We're looking for Into the Storm. Big time congratulations to the dungeon here. We're going to let you guys unwind, reset, and celebrate. And we'll be back with you guys in just a minute in the post game. Congratulations. Thank you. My heart is still racing after that match we just witnessed. Congratulations, gentlemen. What a match indeed. What is? What are your thoughts coming out and getting that W? Uh, do or die. <laughs> that's, that's pretty much our slogan in this division right now. Do or die. It's big for our team. It's, all, it's almost as big for our team to eliminate the suspects from this tournament altogether. Uh, for our faction, but mainly because I like playing with this guy. We live to fight another day. Yeah, we love we love playing close matches. I just wish that I'd gotten that round one miss. Uh, but, you know, we play our best when we play aggressive. And I love my teammate here. Him going for that lead Tamahori in round two was big stuff. Uh, obviously, you know, in the final round, you never, you never, you never know what's going to happen. Uh, but it seems like the only time it really falls apart the way that it only can fall apart is when I'm playing against this guy, not next <laughs> to him. So <laughs> I'm glad it went the way it did. And I can just tell the mood from you guys right now is just, I, there's, a, there's a hype up here. You guys are so elated about this. Is it because you're coming off of those two losses and now you're going up this uphill roller coaster? I mean, yeah, it's, it's, uh, we know what was expected of us. And it, you know, at a certain point, like Ben said, it doesn't really matter how you lose to, you just have to, who you lose to, you just have to quit losing. And, um, you know, but this isn't just for personal glory. This is for the dungeon. This is for the faction. I know that people have written us off and, and looked at other teams and said that we're, uh, you know, we're, we're lagging, but, uh, we're, we're anything, but we have, Plenty of spots left at Spectacular to book, and we intend on booking all of them. Yeah, yeah, we're not the ones being audited by Harloff. That's Brad Gilmore. I don't know what's going on. I hope he gets through it all right with all his taxes and stuff behind him. But uh, look, revenge is sweet. Me and Sam have been trading all season long. We all know the star power that we went against today of McQueenie and Febreze. And, you know, today was our day, and... Um, I really am proud of you guys. You guys know I can't stay long. Got a few things going on. So I'm going to leave right now. I'm going to leave it to you boys to wrap this thing up. But I can't wait to kick whoever's butts next. 
The, I don't really don't even know. I don't even know the names of half the teams. The the, the press get, room. The press. Yeah, room I don't know manager. who that is. Go get okay. them, boys. But yes, yeah, so speaking of the press room, they are your next match in this tournament. We have Horowitz and Nemiroff. And Ben, you did face Perry in the singles tournament this year, and it went to overtime. How does it feel going up against Perry again in this tournament? She played well in that match. Uh, there is no doubt in the talent of Horowitz either. I mean, that guy is the real deal. You know, you watch him play the game, and he plays the game psychologically like a veteran player should. Uh, you know, he's only been in a few matches, but uh, that's not a team to take lightly. You know, in teams... When you have a powerhouse player who's playing at the level that Horowitz is playing right now, they can almost anchor the performance themselves. You know, it comes down to a couple misses or gets in round one for Perry, and otherwise it's, you know, you can put a lot on Horowitz's shoulders. So we know they're a real deal team, uh, and we take them very seriously. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've played Perry in teams before. She is, I mean, look at her tournament performances, look at the wins on her record. She is never an opponent to take lightly, and Horowitz is a rookie sensation. He's headlining as headline New York, I mean, uh, what else is left um, to do? So, uh, you know, we we just, especially in an eight-team tournament, as this is now our second one of the season, um, there's no easy round. So it's uh, back to the drawing board. We're back at zero. The scoreboard clicks back down, and, and we start all over. You know, okay. Jilly, uh, mm -hmm. a couple things that I want to add here. Of course. Drew McQueenie deserves our respect. The man's a legend of the movie trivia Schmodown. Maybe not the strongest performance today, but one of the greatest teams players that we've ever seen. Uh, and truth be told, somebody that uh, if not for Dan Merle, I would have been proud to play alongside this season. I just, you know, ended up with Dan Merle instead. Paige for Betty, you know, it looks like you were the one who missed a question in the last round today, wasn't it? And uh, Sam, how's that loss taste? Choke on that. Ooh, uh, can, can never have an interview with, with Ben Bateman without him, you know, dishing that fire. But speaking of Paige for Betty, there's definitely, I mean, obviously you guys have a feud going on. She kicked you out of the singles tournament. Does that make that win today just so much sweeter? I mean, listen, great players sometimes make mistakes. Uh, and unfortunately, I missed a question in that round uh, against Paige in a category I should have gotten right. And uh, truth be told, Paige is a great player. We can chalk up her misses that day the same way. So I think she's got a future in this league. But, you know, you got to lose and win afterwards to be great. So let's see what she can do after this loss. What, what you're reading there, Dan? <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm just going to quote John Goodwin from one of my favorite SNL sketches. Leave me out of this one. I'm just enjoying <laughs> this wonderfully written uh, book here. Oh, wonderful. Well, congratulations again, gentlemen. Looking forward to seeing you in uh, round two of the team's tournament. So congratulations on your win today. Thanks, Thanks. Joe. Drew, Paige, Sam, unfortunately it did not go your way today, but can I just say for a rookie team who we've never seen compete together, you guys played phenomenally. How does it feel being a team in this team's tournament? Well, this is our, as you said, this is our first time playing. And um, as somebody who has played in several different combinations uh, before this, I can say that um, immediately, I felt at ease with Paige as a partner. And I feel like this is a good partnership, a real partnership, not just, all right, for the tournament, let's figure out what we're gonna do and scramble. This makes sense. And I, I feel like today we we started to figure that, that chemistry and that formula out. I think this is the beginning, definitely not the ending. Exactly. And I mean, you can see right off the bat in round two that that's where we shined. Our chemistry, it blew minds. We created a baby genius with that. I mean, there that five corner. I mean, did that movie even go to theaters? I thought that was a VOD movie, but whatever. It was a blip. Things happen. Sometimes you just don't know all the answers. Obviously, Ben didn't take the three pointer because we know he drops the ball every time on three point questions. So <laughs> it is what it is. But I am still so honored that I got to play next to this guy right here, one of the best team the best teams player of all time so no oh, thank you miss i uh i look i think it was a good match i think um the fact that we got to where we did in the match and that we pushed them as far as we did into that two three and five point um yeah i think uh i think for a first time team i think our legs were strong i think uh really we if this was a bigger tournament i think we could get some momentum going i uh oh, yes. yeah but that's fine there's time now, Sam, you are the mastermind between the team that is the Untouchables. Where did this team coming together? Where did that idea come from? 
Uh, it was uh, to, to say it was a natural fit is an understatement. Uh, I mean, these two have such an incredible base level of knowledge. But like any great player, there's always going to be some small gaps, and they complement those gaps in each other so remarkably well uh, that this was as natural a team as I've ever seen put together. And I am obviously bummed that we weren't able to really showcase that today in this one match, uh, but hopefully there will be more in the future. And uh, I just, I can't help myself. Was that Ben Bateman throwing barbs, asking me how this loss tasted? I don't know, let me see how the six and three overall record between the suspects and the dungeon tastes in our favor. You mean winning twice as many games <laughs> as we've lost against you? I don't know, those are some fun stones to throw hiding behind the skirt of one goat Dan Merle. I'd say, <laughs> come on out and fight just by yourself against either one of these players. But we did that last time, Ben, and we know exactly yeah. how it shook out. Okay. So you can keep enjoying them apples while you absolutely hide in the shadow of the greatest of all time, Dan Merle, and collect these hard earned victories for yourself. Get out of here. I, I feel like I should just like leave and just let you two just I go just, at it. Like, who is he to throw stones? He lives in a glass house built by Dan Merle. What's wrong with him? Anyway, you didn't anyway. say we were bringing our flamethrowers today. Oh my goodness. Oh, I have mine. One second, guys. Oh, oh man. Well, well. Then Damon like, suck it. Um, oh, <laughs> this feud between you two is just never going to end, is it? No, definitely no. Uh, let me check. Uh, as long as he uses like his repeats when he acts like he doesn't know an answer, yeah, it's never gonna end. Oh, because man. I've knocked him out of a tournament once. I can't wait to play him next season to do it all over again. So, and hopefully I'll have this guy right next to me to do it again. So, now if we do go into next season as a team, where do you think we're gonna adjust so that we can grow and build together? Uh, I think it's just about um, experience. I honestly think it's just about uh, running more matches together, just getting more and more of that that timing and that chemistry down. The reason Sam and I became such a strong team by the end was because we had seasoned that that team, you know, that team that we had built. That's exactly what's going to happen here. It takes seasoning in order to become a really great team. I truly think we have the raw ingredients in place. Like I, I said, 100%. we're making a baby genius as it goes. <laughs> Both of our brains together. There you go. The untouchable oh. today. It just didn't pan out our way. But <laughs> Okay, we're Charlie Martin Smith in the elevator today. Yes. Next time. Next hey. time we're Costner. You'll see. Exactly. <laughs> Just, yeah. just wait, just wait for it, folks. And we'll hopefully we'll see you. Hopefully we'll see you two as a team again. Hopefully we'll continue to see this intense, crazy, fiery rivalry between Paige and Ben and Sam and, and Ben and Kaiser and pretty much anybody with the usual suspects in the dungeon. To be completely honest, so <laughs> I'm sorry it didn't go your way today, guys. But hope to get to see you again in the future. Thanks for having us. Of course, Thank you. we'll be back. Don't you worry, guys. I'm just reading a blank piece of paper here so that I don't have to be involved in the uh, heat that is being thrown in both of these post-game interviews. My goodness, sounds like there's a lot of bad blood between the dungeon and the usual suspects, Brad. I don't know what have would have given you that impression uh, I, <laughs> between these two teams. Look, obviously, Ben Bateman always has, has something to say. Sam Lamine always has something to say. Both of them are great players of the game. Drew McQueenie, Paige for Freddie, Dan Merle, everybody involved in this match today. Nothing but excellence. Uh, comes out of them. So um, I, I, I'm not surprised. There's a somewhat friendly, if we can use that term, rivalry between these uh, these factions and these teams. But, uh, you know, they have to keep it entertaining and interesting. Yeah, that's right. And the dungeon and the usual, sus usual suspects never disappoint on that end. So a great match today for Danger Zone. The Untouchables come up a little bit short, but we are in the middle of tournament season. That's right. The singles tournament's still going. The Star Wars tournament's still going. And you just saw some of the team's tournament. Of course, Danger Zone going on to play the press room in the next round make sure you check out the schmodownlive.com for all of our upcoming events and tickets to those and of course patreon.com slash schmodown i've been a patron at the ten dollar level for a very long time making sure i can catch all of those pay-per-view matches there's so much fun on fridays for brad gilmore christian harloff mark baby carrots ellis skybound i am andrew guy thank you so much for watching keep studying keep answering questions